so you can uh, basically there is an inversion temperature for every gas which have of course has to have interactions inside it and if you are below the inversion temperature the mu jt of the gas turns positive and if it is positive it will lead to cooling of the gas if you do an expansion of the gas through the joule th thomson throttling of the gas and if you are above the inversion temperature if you do a throttling of the gas it will start heating up so this is actually the principle based on which one can do cooling of the gas and here is you can see this is the joule thomson coefficient plotted as a function of temperature for a variety of gases and you can see this is the curve represents the mu jt the joule thomson coefficient the joule thomson coefficient for example for hydrogen is actually negative for temperatures which are above 200 kelvin for temperatures above 200 kelvin one can see that the mu jt is less than zero and less than zero means that if you take the hydrogen gas and do a joule thomson expansion of it then actually the gas will heat up instead of cool down and if you are below 200 then if you cool the gas below 200 and then you do a joule thomson expansion then the gas will actually start cooling down and once it starts cooling down the particles will actually come close together and from a gas it will transform into a liquid and the liquefaction temperature of hydrogen is about 10 kelvin so you can get liquid hydrogen at 10 kelvin and using the joule thomson you can continue to cool the gas further and further until the gas becomes so cold that it will transform from a gas to a liquid and then you can use this liquid to cool various things you can pour the liquid on some material and you can cool it down to 10 kelvin and so on now hydrogen is of course hydrogen molecules or hydrogen atoms actually interact with each other so they have pretty strong interactions with each other and so you can actually cool it down but helium is somewhat like an ideal gas and as i had showed as I, as we had seen that the mu jt for for an ideal gas is actually zero you cannot do any joule thomson expansion or cooling of uh, ideal gas so helium is actually an inert gas and it is very weakly interacting so its inversion temperature is actually very low the inversion temperature of helium is sits at close to 50 kelvin okay so you really have to cool down the helium gas to below 50 kelvin if you want to do a joule thomson expansion of the helium and then cool it down okay and cool it down through repeated joule thomson expansion okay you cool it down continuously you go down from 50 kelvin you do a joule thomson expansion the gas comes down to say maybe uh, 40 kelvin then this 40 kelvin is again brought back it is cooled down and this 40 kelvin is again done a joule thomson expansion comes down to 30 kelvin and you do a repeated joule thomson cycling of the gas ensuring that it never warms up okay and then you can actually liquefy the gas and then helium actually liquefies at 4.2 kelvin this was a major breakthrough okay so hydrogen whereas hydrogen liquefies at 10 kelvin helium liquefies at 4.2 kelvin and the major technological challenge for helium was that its inversion temperature is very low its inversion temperature is 50 kelvin so you have to actually reach and cool down the system to 50 kelvin the helium gas has to be at least cooled down to 50 kelvin and for that you have to use gases like hydrogen and other gases which have been cooled down to a lower temperatures okay to cool down the helium below its inversion temperature and once it's cooled down to below its inversion temperature then you can actually start doing a joule thomson expansion of the gas to cool it down further if the helium gas is above 50 kelvin that means in this regime then you know that the gas is not going to cool down if you do a jt expansion it's actually going to warm up it's only in this regime below the inversion temperature is where 
if you do a jt expansion of the gas the gas is going to cool down so helium although it is very weakly interacting it is possible to actually cool it down and the liquefaction temperature for helium the liquefaction temperature for helium which is also the boiling temperature namely the temperature at which liquid helium gets converted into gas is 4.2 kelvin so now with if you get liquid helium you can pour liquid helium onto something or you can immerse something in liquid helium you can take a liquid helium bath which has liquid helium inside it and you can immerse something inside it and you can actually cool this down to 4.2 kelvin measure it at 4.2 kelvin and do various things with it okay so this was a major technological breakthrough which happened which actually changed whole of condensed matter physics and led to the discovery of superconductivity this is the great kemmerling owens who actually liquefied helium he was successful in liquefying helium for the first time this is his apparatus he spent i think about i'm not sure about the number of years but maybe around 13 years trying to actually liquefy helium and you can see Kamerling owns is with his close friend with whom he used to exchange a lot of notes and if you can recognize him this is Wonderwall the same Wonderwall who plays whose equation plays a very important role in liquefaction okay in mu jt okay uh, that you know that unless you have an interacting gas Wonderwall's gas basically has interactions inside it and unless you have an interacting gas you cannot get joule thomson effect so there were it is known that uh, um, kamerling owens was exchanging a lot of notes with joule thomson uh, with uh, wonderwalls i'm sorry to actually understand the process of inversion temperature and so on and how to reach the inversion temperature this is a modern liquefier that is used okay and this is these are the pistons these are the pistons which actually compress the gas and there is a joule thompson uh, valve out here through which the gas undergoes a free expansion there are a lot of complex heat exchangers to remove heat from the gas maintain it at a constant temperature if it gets cold to maintain it doesn't allow the heat to actually enter and warm up the gas and so on so it's a very very complex system but this is a modern uh, helium he liquid helium uh, uh, machine liquefier uh, which you will find in different institutes we also have one in our helium plant which is actually used for liquefying helium before closing this topic of joule thomson effect just let us understand physically what is happening and i will give you a quick physical understanding of this process if you recall that two molecules actually uh, the potential energy diagram for two molecules is the Lennard Jones potential diagram, which says that if uh, the particles are very far apart from each other, then the interaction between the particles is attractive. Now, if you bring the particles close to each other, then at some point the potential energy becomes minimum. Okay. And if you bring them close to them further, then they actually become repulsive. So this is the repulsive region and this is the attractive region. So if the particles are actually far apart from each other, then they have attractive interaction between each other. So the potential energy is high, is increasing because of attractive interaction. So as the particles have moved away from each other, so when the gas is expanding, when the gas is expanding and the particles are actually moving away from each other, the interaction between the particles is attractive. So the potential energy is increasing and if you are not doing extracting any work out of the gas or putting any, any heat into the gas, then of course the total energy is constant. So if the potential energy is increasing because you are moving the particles away from each other, so they are doing, so the potential energy of the system is increasing because there is attractive interaction, the kinetic energy of the gas will decrease. And the kinetic energy of the gas decreasing implies that the temperature is going to fall if the gas is going to expand. 
However, this is not the only case. This is not the only case. There is a competing situation which is going on in the system and that is an opposite type of an effect. Namely, when the gas molecules actually collide with each other, then temporarily kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy. When the gas molecules are actually going to collide with each other, then temporarily the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. Okay. And if you are increasing, if the gas is expanding, then the average number of collisions in the gas, the average number of collisions in the gas falls, which implies that the average potential energy of the gas drops because the for each average collision for each collision that occurs in the gas there is a conversion of the kinetic energy into potential energy so if the average number of collisions is decreasing the average potential energy of the gas is going to fall and again because total energy of the gas is constant in joule thomson expansion it would give rise a drop in potential energy would give rise to an increase in the kinetic energy which gives rise to a increase in temperature so in one case, when you are going to a dilute gas, because the gas is expanding, particles are moving further apart, they are actually expanding against the attractive interaction. So there is more potential energy. The potential energy is increasing. So what will happen is that total energy is constant. If potential energy increases, the kinetic energy is going to drop. And this will give rise to a decrease in temperature. But along with that, there is a competing effect, which is that with collisions, kinetic energy is converted into potential energy and if the gas is expanding then the average number of collisions is decreasing because particles are moving further apart mean free path is increasing less number of collisions less number of collisions means the average kinetic and average potential energy of the system which is obtained because of the collisions that potential energy is dropping if the potential energy decreases, total energy is constant, then the kinetic energy will increase and then instead of cooling, the gas will start heating up. So actually these are competing processes. These two are competing with each other. These are competing processes. And which dominates will determine whether if this dominates, which happens at low temperatures because at low temperatures there is you you have reduced all the fluctuations in the gas then it is basically the interactions in the gas which are more important and then if you are trying to expand the gas the gas will do work against the internal forces and it is using the internal energy of the gas itself to do the expansion as a result its temperature is going to drop but at reasonably high temperatures it is the other effect which is this effect which may take over and instead of reducing the temperature of the gas the temperature of the gas might rise because you are reducing the number of collisions and that effect which leads to a rise in temperature is going to dominate so therefore depending on the temperature which is the t inversion temperature if you are below t inversion then at temperatures t less than t inversion it is this mechanism which is dominant and for t greater than t inversion it is this mechanism which is dominated which gives rise to a rise in temperature so this gives you a basic physical understanding of the joule thomson effect